Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, Dr. Jack Audi here, and I'm going to take you through uh, SARS-CoV-2, um, which is short for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, aka COVID-19. Now, the reason why it's called SARS-CoV-2 is because we had a SARS infection. Uh, it was more of an, a, a few local epidemics and never reached the pandemic level of a viral infection. And that was back in 2002. Um, and that too was a coronavirus. So this is now the second uh, SARS coronavirus that has hit uh, the human population. Both times it seemed to have spent some time in bats, which is interesting. But then it went through some intermediary species that were still trying to figure out which ones. So here's a quick breakdown. Um, we've got a protein and membrane envelope. This is what surrounds the genome of the cell. And it is made out of spike proteins, which I'm sure you've heard of, these famous proteins here in the red, um, and a phospholipid membrane, which is this gray stuff in here. This is a computer model here, and this is the uh, an electron microscope image of an actual coronavirus. And inside the cell, there is an RNA genome. Now, if we crack that open, this is what it looks like. The spike proteins are actually embedded into the membrane. And there are actually a number of other membrane proteins and envelope proteins. And they are essential in the structure and formation of this envelope inside the cell. But we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into that later on in the video. Now, inside this virus, it's a very densely packed nucleoprotein. What does that mean? Well, essentially, it means the RNA genome tightly packed in with protein. So it's the nucleotides and the proteins all tightly packed in together um, to uh, ensure that the RNA is functional when it comes out, out of the virus. So it is organized and packed in there with proteins. And again, it's got this phospholipid membrane around the outside of it. And later on, I'm going to do a video about how this phospholipid membrane is important when we consider whether hand sanitizers, alcohol-based hand sanitizers, are effective against COVID-19. But that's in the next video, so check that out. Right, so we're going to go through the life cycle of the coronavirus, and I'm going to do a bit of a deep dive into this. But before we zoom in to each little step, it's good to get an overall picture. The virus comes in, its genome is replicated over and over again, the RNA genome is then translated into proteins on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. These proteins then help form the new virus. And the virus is then released through a process called exocytosis. So this is the rough life cycle of the virus. But now let's do a bit more of a deep dive. First, how does the virus get into the cell? Now this is actually a kind of a complicated process, but it's super interesting and mechanical. So I'll give, oh, let's jump into it. So first of all, those spike proteins are essential. The reason why we've heard about them so much is they're so important. These spike proteins bind onto a protein that's expressed by the host cell. It's expressed by our cells. And this is called the ACE2 protein. Now we call it a receptor, but it's not really a receptor. It's only a receptor for the virus. Its actual role is an enzyme, and I'll tell you about that later. But it's a receptor from the perspective of the virus because it grabs onto it. It has that sort of receptor signaling molecule relationship where the, the proteins fit together, essentially allowing the virus to grab onto the surface of the cell. And then we see a bunch of molecular steps here to allow the virus to get into the cell. And I'm going to break that down to you. So the spike protein is, bro is broken up into two uh, main domains, uh, spike protein 1 and spike protein 2. And it's spike protein 1 that recognizes that ACE membrane protein. So let me just rewind here. Here we've got the cell. Here we've got the virus. These are the proteins expressed on the surface of the virus, the spike proteins, and this is the cell expressing this ACE membrane protein here, ACE2 membrane protein here. I'm going to do a bit more of a deep dive into that. So the S1 uh, domain of the spike protein recognizes that ACE receptor, the ACE2 receptor on the membrane. Now, here's super interesting. The spike protein domain 1 gets chopped off. It gets chopped off again by an enzyme by a protease expressed by the host cell. 
And that's essential. And actually, as a little fun exercise, as I take you through the life cycle of uh, SARS-CoV-2, I want you to think about potential drug targets. Potential drug targets would inhibit the life cycle, would attack the life cycle of SARS-CoV-2. So we can already see a couple here. If we block the ACE receptor, maybe the ACE2 receptor, maybe that will block the virus binding to the cells. But also if we block this protease here, we will block the next step in this, in, which is essential for the virus to enter the cell. So this protease, it chops off the S1 domain. And now the virus is close enough for the membrane, for the S2 domain, to now essentially jump and insert a membrane domain uh, region of the protein into the host cell. So it's essentially unfolded and stuck a membrane-soluble part of its protein into the host cell membrane. So essentially it's now got a hold of it. And so the whole function of this first S1 uh, region of the spike protein is to get the, the virus close enough to allow that to happen. And that's actually why we need it chopped off. We need the S1 region to be chopped off to allow that insertion, that sort of spring shot, as the protein gets shoots out and inserts into the membrane of the host cell. Now, just uh, for visualization here, we've labeled one part of the domain red and one part of the domain yellow of the S2 domain of the spike protein. It now folds in half, right? So one half of it has grabbed hold of the virus the other half has grabbed hold of the host cell and now it folds in half essentially pulling those membranes together and once the membranes get that close together the hydrophilic hydrophobic interactions start to happen so inside a phospholipid membrane it's hydrophobic on the outside it's hydrophilic and once we get them close enough those hydrophobic domains actually attracted to each other and now the virus and the host cell are joined now this will be happening all over this will be happening all over the virus and all over the cell and so we end up with this um, fissure creating allowing the genome to now come through the two membranes the the viral membrane and the cell membrane have now become one they've fully merged into the same membrane so how does the virus get into the cell well in, in, in some respects, it doesn't get into the cell. Its RNA genome does. So the membranes fuse, and then the RNA genome pops inside the cell. So why do we have this ACE2 protein on our cells? It seems to just be helping the virus get inside our cells. Well, obviously, it has a function, and it is called the angiotensin converting enzyme 2, or ACE2. And what it does is it actually... Um, hydrolyzes uh, angiotensin 2 which is a signaling molecule um, and angiotensin 2 is normally a vasoconstrictor so it causes the blood vessels to contract and when it's hydrolyzed um, it now becomes angiotensin 1 through 7 1 to 7 which just describes it's the amino acids of 1 through 7 and um, now it's a vasodilator um, it's not critical that you know this but it is important to understand that this ACE2 is not a receptor, it's an enzyme that has a function. And the viruses just happen to use it as a gateway. It's their Trojan horse, it's, um, it's their inside man that they grab onto on the surface of the cell and pull themselves in. And what's cool is actually um, there's a lot of data out there. There's now amazing amounts of data online about where you can find these proteins and where you can find the mRNA for those proteins. So basically, where would we find ACE2? And where we would find ACE2 is a potential site that SARS-CoV-2 can now infect and um, proliferate in. And if we go to this proteinatlas.org, we can pop in any gene and see where it's, where it's expressed throughout the body. Um, and it'll bring up a little map for us, which is quite interesting. Um, and it will bring up these graphs. So up here we've got the brain, and we can see very little expression in the brain, very little expression in the eyes. Um, we see a good expression of the protein in the lungs, um, not a lot in the proximal digestive tract, uh, quite a bit in the gastrointestinal tract, you know, so on and so forth. So each of these tissues which express um, ACE2 are a potential place that SARS-CoV-2 could now enter those tissues, right? And that's because without that protein, the virus can't get into the cell. Right. Up, 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 what am I up to next? Ah, but this is critical. 
and this is super essential and it's kind of not surprising so um, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 um, hydrolyzes angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 2 is a signaling molecule that causes vasoconstriction so it might not be surprising that when we do a stain um, this is an immunohistochemistry stain for ACE2 we see it on blood vessels so this is a um, tissue section and we have done immunohistochemistry for ACE2 which is a way to stain just for ACE2 and that comes up black and in this version of immunohistochemistry and here we can see the collapsed veins veins tend to collapse during histology another flat long ones and an artery which tends to maintain its round shape in histology so here we can see an artery and a vein express the ace2 protein at high levels um, and so that's kind of critical our blood vessels themselves are expressing quite high levels of ace2 and that's a potential site for the SARS-CoV-2 infection. And um, what we see is that uh, we see these vascular effects. Um, there was uh, a massive cases of a disease called Kawasaki disease, which is essentially blood clots forming throughout the body, um, particularly in children with SARS-CoV-2. So they were getting um, a massive infection in their blood vessels, which was causing an inflammatory response, which was causing clots. Um, and they were getting blue fingers that almost looked like they had frostbite. Um, we also saw a massive spike in strokes occurring during uh, the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic that we're going through right now. And that's because it's a vascular infection as well as infecting other cells, but particularly it's a vascular infection. And that's because that is where the ACE2 protein is expressed. Right, so back to the life cycle, we've got into the cell. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause there and then in the next video we're going to go over how the genome is replicated, how the proteins are created and then how does the virus get out of the cell. So we've sort of done the first half of the life cycle and so for the next video I'm going to jump into the next half of the life cycle.